Hello there, this is John Hall from Right Here Pens on a lovely sunny afternoon in Shrewsbury. I've just been down to the quarry to see if I could see the night heron, a very rare bird in these parts, but unfortunately, it being a lovely sunny day, it's stayed in the undergrowth on the island. Um, the quarry, by the way, is our local park in the town centre in Shrewsbury. Well worth a visit. But you come here to listen about pens, not to hear me witter on about the town while I do it at lunchtime. So what we're going to talk about today is Cleo Scribent, the Cleo Scribent Classic. Um, one of my favourite pens, as you probably know from previous postings. Um, they've brought out um, an extra fine nib and I thought I'd do a quick writing test uh, to remind you of this excellent range of pens and to show you what they write like. So here we go, down to the table. Okay then, a quick recap about the Clio Scribent Classic range. Um, they're resin pens, as you can see, and they come in three colours, white, black and burgundy. Two levels of trim, palladium and the more expensive gold trim. And they also come as piston fillers. or cartridge converters and if you've heard the previous video you'll know it's a screwing converter and you'll also know that these are pens that I've got a great deal of respect for they're very nice in the hand they have a sense of timelessness about them um, partly from the point of view that the design is pretty timeless and will endure and works extremely well and partly because I think they're likely to last almost forever the build quality is really quite extraordinarily good for a range that starts at about 75 quid for the basic cartridge converter with a steel nib. Now, I said they've introduced an extra fine nib. I'm afraid that's only for the, um, for the gold nib pens, but actually they're not too horrendously expensive. And I'm just going to remind myself. There we go. Yes, the palladium piston with a gold nib costs you £125. Piston filling pen with a gold nib, goodness me. And that's 14 carat solid gold nib. And I think it's £115 for the cartridge converter with the gold nib. That's right. Now, a little bit more expensive for the gold finish. I'm not quite sure why. It's very good gold finish but it's £145 there for the um, cartridge converter and £155 for the piston version. But anyway, what we're looking at here today is uh, the nib sizes. It's 14 karat gold nib, as I've said. Very good value for money and actually a very nice nib to use. And I've got them all lined up here in, I hope, order. Um, the ink I'm going to be using is this very nice Sailor. Um, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce the name actually, here we go. Um, Maioi Sumeri, possibly. Maioi Sumeri, something like that anyway. And as you'll see it's a really nice bluey colour. Right, okay, so let's have a look. I've actually written the name down here to remind me. So there we go. I hope you can see that there. So this is the piston filler and this is the broad nib. So let's have a look and see what this does on the page. I've often reflected that there's um, as much art as science when it comes to nib manufacture and you will get variations even with the same pen with slightly different widths, slightly different feel to them. But this is the broad. Oop, need to dip again. And as you'll see, that is laying down a fairly good, solid line. Well, such fun to watch me write, eh? So, there we go, that's a broad nib, and it is, I would say, a very respectably sized broad nib. There we go. We now move on to the medium nib. 
as you can see I put some thought into the order in which all this is going to happen so here we are There we go, and I think you'll agree that is a finer line, but still substantial. Now, with mounting excitement, we move down to the fine line. And I had had comments from some that this wasn't quite as fine as they would like it to be. Although, actually, let's have a look. Hmm, actually. I would say that is definitely a bit finer, but probably not the finest fine I've ever seen. It is certainly finer than medium, but I wouldn't say there's a huge amount in it. So with mounting excitement, we turn to the palladium trim, white, cartridge converter, extra fine nib. is a little bit finer. The nibs for these pens, as you'll know, uh, come from Jovo. Um, there are basically two companies make nibs for most pen makers. A few still make their own, but the majority buy them in from either Bock or Jovo, both German companies. Now, well this is finer. Yes it is. And it's actually quite a nice nib to use. But I can think that there are many who would find this to be still a bit on the broad side. I'm thinking particularly of those who would enjoy using a sailor nib, for instance. Um, I would suspect that a sailor is considerably finer than this. And in fact, you know what? I'm just going to stop the machine and I'm going to go and get one. And we're going to give it a go. There you go. What's the point of having a pen shop if you can't do this sort of thing occasionally? Of course I've forgotten which is which now, but I've got a feeling this is the extra... Oh no! Let's have a look. Oh. This is the fine. So, these are both professional gear. The Sailor professional gears. One's fine, one's extra fine. Um, Japanese nibs are typically thought to be about half size finer than the European equivalent. Um, well, let's wait and see. So this is a fine. Well, I would say that's very much finer than either of these, actually. Um, as you probably expect, the clear scribent is a bit smoother, but then it is, it is a larger nib. So there we are. And let's have a look and see what happens with the extra fine. Yep, that's what it is. Let's try that here. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, let's just pop down here and give them both a bit of a workout so that we get a proper sort of comparison. So, a proper 
comparison. You can probably hear um, this is the extra fine and it's generating a certain amount of nib noise. And you can certainly feel um, that there's a certain amount of tooth there, and certainly picking up any imperfections in the paper, um, of which there are a few, of course, because it is nice paper, this. And so let's try this as well. A proper comparison. There we go. Well, so this is fine, and this one is Yep, just checked it and it is extra fine too. There we go. So here we are. Well this is quite interesting, isn't it? Because it's very clear that both of the sailor pens, I would say, are significantly finer. But I would also say that with my size handwriting, I would cope quite nicely with an extra fine or a fine. Um, you don't get a full idea when you dip a pen. You need to establish flow and just sort of get, let the thing settle down a bit. And it is conceivable that the fine and extra fine here will, will actually wind up being a little bit finer um, in everyday use when not dipped. But what is absolutely clear is that the sailor is a very much finer nib. Well, I've got to say that was a bit of a surprise. Um, I wasn't expecting to be, there to be quite such a big difference between the Japanese and the Jovo European nibs on the clear scribent pens. Um, in terms of preference, to some extent you pay your money, you take your choice. Um, I find the extra fine and the fine on Sailor to actually be a bit too fine for me. They do catch on the paper a bit, no matter how good the paper is. Um, but if what you like, if your handwriting is very small and you do want something that is very, very precise, then I think those are probably the pens you need to be going for. The extra fine on the Clio Scribent, I think, would accommodate all but the very smallest writings, and you might find the weight of the pen a little bit more to your taste, and you may well find the smoothness of the nib a little bit more to your taste. I'm just going to hold this up to remind you of how the writing test went. So there we go. Um, I feel quite sooty back here, but there we go. So, I mean, clearly you've got a gradual reduction in size in the clear, but if I say, as I say, if what you want is a very, very fine line, I think probably what you need to be heading for is probably one of the excellent Japanese sailor pens. But for everyday writing, I'd go for clear scribent personally. But there we go. Well, thank you very much indeed for listening to this um, somewhat rambly thing. It's been quite instructive to me and I hope it's been instructive to you and will help to inform your future pen purchasing. So thank you as always for listening.